Okay, the burr method. Um, we're not talking about the chill that's the weather these days. Um, it's an investing method. Um, burr stands for buy, rehab, or renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. Um, it's known as a smart investor's uh, investment cycle. Um, I've had a couple of properties, I still have a few where I just kind of buy and hold. I've done minor TLC, like literally just paint, um, maybe change out a floor here and there once the wear and tear is a little bit high. But ten, I've tended to just rent them out as is. And when I learned about Burr about a year back properly, I just haven't been able to um, get the funds together to really jump in and do what I want to do with it. But um, I think part of that was my fear of not really knowing. And now that I've got Grinder to Leon, my plan is to at least do one Burr property this year, hopefully two. And, um, we'll make Grinder the uh, the main uh, point man or coach on, on Burr. So traditional guys, like I said, I've, I've bought a few. I know some of you have as well. Um, you buy a property 20, 25% down. Uh, you might paint it, you list it on MLS, you rent it out, and then you forget about it. And all you, you know, your, your checks are clearing every month, hopefully. You're um, writing it off on your taxes and you're getting the price appreciation, maybe a little bit of cash flow and the tenant's paying down your mortgage. Nothing wrong with the strategy. It's a long-term play. Um, but if you really want to build your empire, you, you want to do a deep dive in Burr, which is what we're going to do now. Um, okay. Burr, like I said, buy homes. The key here is to buy them under value. Um, you want to rehab or renovate. Um, that rehab or renovation cost, you also want to make sure will get you to a point where you can sell that home, not sell the home, but get it appraised at a higher value uh, than what you've put in. Um, otherwise, it doesn't work. Uh, you want to rent it, so you want to make sure it's in a community that has good rental rates and low vacancies. Um, there's um, some additional costs or headaches here. You get, you're going to finance it when you first purchase it. Then you're going to refinance, hopefully, um, in less than the next six months, once you've done all the renovations, get a new appraised value, um, bump up the mortgage um, that hopefully is still um, paid by your rent that you're taking in, and then take out a lot of the equity that you have in that position. Uh, and then you take your, your earnings from that refinance and you do it again. So buy, um, guys, most lenders these days, they'll do, um, if you're doing a flip or an investment property, you will need at least 20% down. Sometimes you need 25. Um, so keep that in mind. So the first thing you're looking for is buying an undervalued property. Um, you will have to come up with a 20% down payment. So if you're buying an undervalued property in Toronto, that property might still be a million bucks, which means you need $200,000. That's probably not the best strategy for your first one. What you want to do is look for properties in places like Windsor, London, um, New Market, Aurelia, wherever outside the GTA, where you can get in maybe in the 300K mark or lower. And that way you're getting in and your down payment is closer to 60,000 or less, because um, you also have to do some renovations. Um, the guideline is um, you want to take that undervalued price plus your potential rental budget, and you want to try and ensure that's around at most 80% of what you think the new value will be once you're done. It's kind of like that HGTV show, um, Love It or List It. You know, they always give them the price and they say, Pre-reno, your house was worth X. You put in 100K. Post-reno, your your house is worth Y. Um, that's basically the the simple math on it. Um, and and the whole thing is you want to again make sure you're gonna your renovation is gonna get you to an appropriate appraisal. 
The other thing you want to make sure with appraisals, they usually come in under what the houses are selling for in the market. We see it all the time, right? You, you pay 500 for a house or a condo, the bank appraises it um, just a little bit less because of their risk guidelines and things like that. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Um, when you're buying your property uh, for this investment, um, if you're lucky enough to have cash, that's best because you can even bid lower, um, do a quick close and get to work right away. If you're going to use um, a traditional lender, uh, my advice would be to use a mortgage broker, develop a good relationship. Um, something you want to keep in mind with that broker is brokers get paid on their deal uh, when it's done. They will get clawed back if you refinance that property, usually um, before a one year period or a six month period. So make sure your broker knows that um, the understanding will be you'll go back to them for the refinance so they'll get paid. And at that point, you're, you're holding that um, property anyway, so they know they're not gonna be losing out in the future. Um, and of course, you're going to be doing this many more times, hopefully. So they will reap the benefits um, in the long run. Okay. Um, ARV um, is your after repair value or your your new appraised value um, post renovation. That's a number you want to try and uh, project or estimate uh, before you put in your offer. Again, you're going to be looking at what is a finished house in that neighborhood sell for and um, that's the that's the number you're going to use as your uh, post reno value and then you work backwards you're going to take off let's say it's going to cost you thirty thousand for renovations you're going to take thirty thousand off that price and then you're going to come to um, a target price where the numbers make sense and we'll get to get into that a little bit later